shocking developments in the world of college football alongside Corey Clark, senior writer, lead writer at Warchant.com. My name is Tom Lang, and while this isn't directly Florida State news, we had to talk about it. Nick Saban is retiring per multiple reports, and Corey, that's just wild, man. Nick Saban's time as a college football coach is apparently over, just like that. You, you knew it was coming at some point, right, in our lifetimes. He couldn't coach until he was 100. But, um, yeah, cert- certainly didn't see this coming uh, so, y- you know, so quickly after the – I mean, the championship was just played two days ago. Uh, and then he's announcing his retirement. You would have thought maybe he would have announced it uh, last week. Um, but, yeah, man, I, you say that it doesn't really have a Florida State connection. Well, a lot of people watching this are probably wondering, well, will it? Does it? Right. Uh, because you have a head coach that is appealing uh, to a lot of big schools. Florida State is a big school, uh, one of the biggest programs, powerhouse football powerhouses in the country, but it's also Alabama. So, you know, would Alabama be interested in Mike Norvell? I mean, we're just spitballing, so we can take this down a bunch of different avenues. It's not going to be all about uh, Mike Norvell and the prospect of Alabama, but uh, would Alabama be interested in Mike Norvell? Probably. Um, at some point, I don't know that he'd be 1A on their list. Um, but at the same time, I think the better question, Tom, and I think this goes for all of the, the names that are going to be mentioned when it comes to this particular job. Would Mike Norvell be interested in Alabama? Mm. Because you talk about uh, footsteps to follow, impossible legacy to live up to, and a fan base that if you go 8-4 and four one year, Hold on to your butt, man. You might be out of a job. Um, so because they had high expectations anyway, now they're going to be through the roof. Like Nick Saban always had a top 10 team. If you finish at 19 one year, buddy, you might be you might be handed a pink slip. So I wonder, Tom, when it comes to that, what what names they will go after that are viable names that would leave good gigs, really yeah. high paid gigs to go into that uh, cauldron. It's exactly what it would be. Well, you see the listing here I'm putting up on a tweet from Pete Thamel. He won't be the only of his kind uh, to list Mike Norvell on a short list, uh, but there it is. So you, one of the most connected names is at least putting Mike Norvell out there. There's a subsequent tweet that shows potential buyouts, and Mike Norvell's, according to Pete, is only $4 million, which is absolutely chumpy. Yeah, but that also doesn't matter to Alabama. It could Correct. be $40 million. That, that number is irrelevant if they're trying to get the guy. It's not like they would be interested in Norvell – but he's like, oh, he's got a $12 million buyout. Never mind. Let's go on to plan B. That that was never going to be an issue. That's correct. But in the era of Jimbo Fisher buyouts, it really yeah. is a pittance compared to some. Yes, uh, correct. And including the, the record one where that dude would have been up for this and in line for this job, Corey, about four or five years ago. Not so much anymore. I don't see Jimbo Fisher's name nope. on the list. But, yeah, this is the thing about the dominoes. This is where it does impact Florida State is if Dan Lanning were to say no, and let's assume that he's the one of the top candidates, it seems like most media members believe Oregon's Dan Lanning is a place that Alabama would go and they would go early. I would think a coach from Oregon would say yes to the cauldron of Alabama. Yeah. Uh, just that, that is a, a clear step up and a clear path forward. Uh, but uh, look, Corey, uh, this is going to get interesting for Florida State maybe a couple of ways because let's say, indirectly, we talked about this in our company Slack, just as people reacting to this, what if Sark from Texas, who was well liked in that organization of Alabama before he took that gig, what yeah. if Sark says yes and then Texas comes open at that point? Yeah. Mike Norvell, well, we all know he's from Texas, and that is an interesting opportunity if that came uh, open. I don't think Mike Norvell would leave Tallahassee for Eugene if Dan Lanning went down and took the job at Tuscaloosa. So if you're looking for potential reasons to be concerned, I think. It's a good result for Florida State if a guy like Dan Lanning is Alabama's choice, if a guy like Dabo certainly is is Alabama's choice. But if it's either if it's Sark or if Mike makes it to a, a second round or a shorter list, that would be the time where Florida State fans would say, "Okay, what gives here? What what's about to happen?" For sure. And look, I don't think there might be I would guess four schools, four to six programs in the country uh, that you would potentially or think about leave Florida State for. I, it might even be less than that, but Alabama's one of them. I mean, in, in so you, you wonder. Oh, and Texas, I think, is another one, uh, especially because that is where he's from. So yeah, those. The, that's when you talk about the dominoes that fall. And then let's just play this out. Let's say Florida State does go to Texas. Well, then who does Florida State get? And what school does that implode? Like it. It. It just. This is a domino that's going to be going on for weeks. 
um, prob- maybe months, years. We'll see where where it ends up. But uh, yeah, you know, look, right now, as if you talk to me today on December tenth, or sorry, January tenth of two thousand twenty four. I would be stuck. I mean, Norvell has a pretty good thing going here. Uh, yeah. As we've talked about, he's already he's he's replenished through the portal. He's going to have a nice team this year. He's starting to recruit at a really high level. He's got footing in Tallahassee. And while while nobody wants to be in this conference anymore, if you're a head coach looking to make the playoff and looking to win 10 or 11 games, well, it's a better conference to be in than the SEC. And it's not close. Yeah. So, and, and when you look at the roster that Alabama had this year, and you look at the roster that Texas had this year, well, Florida State had a similar roster, even though they're not in the big, bad SEC. You know what I mean? So can is that sustainable for another decade? Probably not. But in the short term, it would it would just be – it would be bizarre to me at, to be at Florida State and to leave for one of those positions because you've got it made here, man. You are – uh, you are beloved right now. You have turned this program around. You are pushing this thing uh, upward and onward. And to then especially go to Alabama to replace that dude, you're just – and look, Norvell, th- these these coaches all have egos. And they all think they're really good. That just does not seem like something you would want to do, no matter how much you believe in yourself, because you're following the best that's ever done it, the best that's ever done it, the best that will probably ever do it. That's not a great position to be in. You want to be in the you want to be the guy that replaces him. You want to be the guy that replaces Willie Taggart. That's a great that's a great life to live. Uh, replacing going from replacing Willie Taggart to going to replacing Nick Saban. Yikes! Yeah, you can't. There's not. There couldn't be two polar up more polar opposites. That that's where Jimbo could call up and say, "Hey, I replaced one legend. I won 29 straight in <laughs> yeah, Natty." Yeah, Who's got right. that resume? Who yep. has got that resume? And I know what Alabama needs. I know what problems they have. I've coached them. I coached against them for all these years. Only beat them once, but I know where the issues are. That's, yeah, yeah, sure. If I'm an Oregon fan tonight, I'm saying again, like, why do we yeah. have to be slapped again and again? I, we've had a, one of our coaches leave for Florida State, and uh, he may not might not have been the reason we were any good anyway. But then the next right. guy left for Miami, and now we're going to have another one leave for Alabama potentially. I'm sure they're fatigued by all of it. For Florida State, Corey, it, it feels like it's more of an indirect threat than a direct threat. Now, that Mike Norvell's name is on the list is yet another reminder. He was, he's at the Paul Bear Bryant dinner tonight yeah. uh, honoring the finalist for a Coach of the Year. And he right. there's, there's an interview on our channel right now in which Mike Norvell addressed the media, and he spoke on things like everything from the season to DJ Lundy going reedy re somehow in the era of yeah. uh, the transfer portal. Uh, but that Mike Norvell has made this list speaks volumes, Corey, to how quickly and how successfully he's rebuilt this program. And it wasn't he was picking up and, and continuing the legacy of Justin Fuente at Memphis. Right. Mike's his own man. And now he's 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 climbed to that level. And let's let's give these lists the perspective that they deserve. Um, he was also on the Texas A&M list. Um, as soon as Jimbo left, it, it, because all of a sudden Texas A&M became a place where you would poach a Florida State coach away. That was not I, – I couldn't imagine him ever leaving Tallahassee for College Station. They ended up going – you don't – only one person goes from Florida State to Texas A&M. One maybe in the history of the world. Uh, they didn't get the co- head coach of Florida State. They got the head coach at Duke. So – and Pete Thamel had him on that list back then as one of the primary candidates – I don't think there was any validity to that. I don't. That, that would just be a uh, almost career suicide, uh, as it has been for almost every coach that's ever coached at Texas A&M. Quite frankly, to go coach there. So, but Alabama is a little bit different. Uh, same conference, a lot of money, a lot of resources, whole lot more tradition and history, in a in a whole, and it's a lot more appealing uh, than Texas A&M would be. But yeah, I I think this list again. I think it's something that a head coach leaves. You come up with four kind of youngish dudes. Lanning's pretty young. Norvell's 40 or 41. I think Lanning's about that age, too. You come up with four kind of up-and-comers, four or five up-and-comers, successful coaches and young, and you throw them and put them on a list. How much that's realistic, we'll see. I mean, I would have thought if I'm putting together a list, a list I would think a call goes to Lane Kiffin. I, before I would have put Sarke- I, I don't know if Sarkeesian was even on Thamel's list, but he should be. I think those guys that have coached at Alabama that understand what Alabama is like, yep. it, the pressure cooker that that place is, and just look, man, it's just different. It's crazy different. It, it, you can't understand how much different Alabama football is as the head coach than anywhere else in the in the country. 
And so those guys would at least understand what they're getting into. Um, but yeah, like you said, even then, you know, you know, yeah, Texas could make a run at Mike Norvell. He's a, he's an appealing coach, which a good it's a good place to be, right? It's a good place to be where you're you're cheering for a program. The people watching this are cheering for a program where your head coach is attractive enough for an Alabama or a Texas to want him. Mike Norvell will be on a list, I'm sure. I don't know if he'll ever get a call. He might get a raise out of it just because that's what that's this time of season. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he'll ever I don't know if he'll be on the short list, but I definitely think his name is on an email somewhere about let's look at these eight to 10 or 12 guys. Well, I think the other part is there's only you've gotten to a place where there's only a few threats in the game and you talked about it. There's only a few programs that you would listen to if you're the head coach of Florida State. But Mike didn't string along the Knowles for the Texas A&M opening. You know, he had a chance that Monday. I, I think Aslan might ask him the question in the press conference about A&M. And, and he played it down the middle. He played it the right way. But, Corey, there weren't overtures. There weren't yeah. We weren't having to do threads updating every six hours like we did for Jimbo and LSU seemingly every November for a run there. And then eventually it was Texas A&M. It would only be a program that rises to this level that would be a threat to Florida State. But to take the optimistic side, let me flip it real quick. This is the last thing. If you think that the portal and recruiting isn't crazy enough, well, there are outs for high school kids and for kids who want to enter the portal when their head coach leaves and somebody up and retires out of nowhere like Saban. So Alabama's roster is now up for grabs in a way. For 30 days, I think, Tom. I thought I think I saw that, that their roster is available. The portal window is open for those kids for the next 30 days. And we know there's tampering going on, so phone calls are being made as we speak by programs across the country checking and kicking the tires to see if these kids want to wait and see or if they just want to jump ship at this point. And it won't just be in Alabama. It'll be wherever they go to go get the replacement for Nick right. Saban as well. Yeah, so yeah, if you're yeah, trying yeah. to get your roster better, and let's say that Mike Norvell is of no con- – there's no concern that he's going anywhere you can get aggressive now make your football team for 2024 even better over the next month to to, you know 60 days and tom i i I will say this i think i i saban was probably going to retire at you know some point this decade anyway but man i i am not it is not lost on me that shashevsky saban the great roy williams um all these guys have kind of started to be dipping getting out of the pool because this is madness what's going on. And I can imagine that Saban is like, I'm not, you know, what I got to now, now I've lost my two of my receivers and five of my linemen because we're not offering them enough money or I'm not all, they don't want to earn a spot. So they want to go somewhere else. This is not college football coaching the way he's coached college football for the last four decades. This is a completely different sport now. And when you get up there in age, it's got to be exhausting. Like it's it is for the Norvells of the world and the Kirby Smarts of the world. Kirby's a little older than Norvell, but he it is for those guys. It's it's not for the seventy something year olds, man, because it is nonstop. And December is incredible, and you have to re recruit your roster every year. You have to re recruit the kids you just signed every day, probably, and it can be exhausting. And you can't develop at Alabama like you used to. Like he used to just hoard them all. Hey, I got this five star that won't play for two years. You can't have them. Well, now that five stars jumping ship, and he's going to go somewhere else, and he's going to beat you, or he's going to at least get a, get close to beating or taking a playoff spot from you. So, man, I, I have to imagine that ex the way this sport is now had to just expedite all of this uh, yeah. to ju- to just and it's something that it, look, man, that you know as a Fal- people know I'm from Atlanta, as a, and I'm a I'm a mostly Falcons fan. They're hard to be a fan of these days. But, you know, there's all these rumors up there, and I know there, there's no truth to them, about Kirby leaving for the Falcons. And people will be like, and you can laugh it off and say that'd be that's a step down, and it is. Uh, but you can also understand the appeal now of these really big-time pro co- college coaches wanting to go to the NFL yeah. because it's not nearly as much work. It's just not. I mean, these guys have to work year-round just to keep their roster. In the NFL, when you sign a free agent, Got him for four years. He can't go sign with the Packers tomorrow. That's right. He can't. He can't get a better deal from their collective. He's ours for the next four years. He can't scrub his social media and have people freak out that he's not a Packer anymore. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Last thing uh, before we sign off here, Nick Saban's next chapter, Corey. He's not done. So, do you think his next chapter is either a a second stab at the NFL, mm. b a cushy television gig, or c Somehow, some way, he wields the power as the first college football commissioner in the history of the sport. What do you think? 
That's a good question. I hadn't thought about the the, the last part there. Uh, I, I, I certainly assume I, I wouldn't assume the NFL, although maybe he's about to be the Seahawks coach. Who knows? Uh, maybe that's why Pete Carroll was let go is because that we got Saban's interested. That would uh, that would certainly be something. I think he'd be great at TV. I would love to hear him actually call games. I think he would give an insight that I know he'd probably be a studio guy, but I'd love to hear him actually call games because I just think it would be really, really fascinating to listen to way his brain works. It's like Jimbo, but slower. Um, so I think he'd be great at that. In the commissioner thing, look, I don't know if there's even a, a pathway to have something like that, but as much grief as I've given Nick Saban over the years for kind of almost ruining the sport in a sense where everybody tried to judge themselves by what he was doing. And so now there's, I think there's been 54 SEC coaches since he got hired at Alabama. I mean, everybody is just recycling them um, because he's made it hard for everybody else. Cause that's the, that's the standard and his standard is impossible. Um, but I think he would, I think there, he is a person that would have the best interest of the sport at heart. Because he's been doing it since the 70s. He's grown up with it. He was a lowly assistant. He was a lowly head coach at like Kent State and then Michigan State. And and so he knows the whole he knows the entire gamut of what this sport is. Um, from assistants from lower level schools to Ala F and Bama, that I think he would be I think it would be really good in his hand in his hands, um, as long as he promises to let other teams besides SEC teams play in the playoff. Well, That's what we'd hope. I would think, uh, given his roots, he, he's from Big East country, technically. Yeah, that's right. Weird way. <laughs> that's right. And then he, he coached in the Big Ten. He, he might very well. Oh, no, that. he's from Big 12 country, Tom. That's They're in right. the Big 12 now. Yeah, West that's Virginia's right. in the Big 12. By well, the way, I, just, I I think all everybody watching this is just really it warms your heart, uh, warms the cockles to know that he got that last playoffs berth. Mm. He got that one last chance in the playoff, right, Tom? It's almost like they might have known if he signs with ESPN, there's another tinfoil hat you could put on and say, yeah. he told them he was retiring weeks and weeks in advance. And they said, yep. whatever we can do for you, Nick, yep. here's one what last rodeo. Do. Well, hey, you've got a great quarterback. You've got yep. an incredible quarterback. Let's get you in there one last time. If that's what happens, uh, it's a uh, seven and five eights would be the size of my fitted tinfoil mm. hat. There you go. Amen, brother. Hey, yeah. I, I'm only half joking. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a part of me that's like, well, if they knew this was happening anyway, yeah, give them one last chance. Who cares about Florida State? It is. Well, we do very much so at War Chant TV. Hit the like button underneath this video. It's rampant speculation time. We're not going to put a thumbnail on this video that says, is Florida State screwed because Saban retired? It's just now you got to wonder what the implications are. We will cover it for you on War Chant TV, WarChant.com. He's Corey. I'm Tom. Again, hit that like button on the way out. We'll talk to you next time.